gonna carve up this bluefin tuna that I was able to shoot the other day. Start here, work around this pack fin back towards the front. The reason is because there's a lot of good belly meat right here. That's the Toro that people talk about. And then plenty that can be left in with the collars. I'm gonna go ahead and start right here with the Dextream serrated edge. So you can already see right here, marbling like Wagyu. It's the Wagyu of the sea. The other thing I do is I come up right here, top, right down this little line. Get it in this way. We're just gonna come across. So now that I've gotten in, I'll go ahead and push it the rest of the way through. So one of the things we're trying to avoid when I cut this whole middle piece right here is all those bones and ligaments that's in that piece. And as you can see, there's a tiny little bit of meat right here. You can actually scoop that and scrape that with a spoon afterwards. That's what a lot of people use for the spicy tuna. They kind of push it together with the mayonnaise and some of the sriracha. I'm gonna come through here, give it a go on the uh, Toro side. This is a female, so you can check it out right here. See this right here? This is a little female. That's her row. Just look at this mark on her stomach. So I actually say, I take this piece out. And having that serrated edge, Super helpful to keep this knife sharp. So this is what I was talking about. A lot of it's bloodline, it's got some bones. You can see where that bone is running up through it. So I might pick at that and do that for Daisy. Daisy loves tuna. I gotta be careful doing this other side because my slip tip is somewhere in this fish. This is the fish that I stoned. So I'm not sure exactly where that slip tip is, but we're gonna try to move this. Up around that fin. I use this where the fin lies as a good way to say that that's where we're gonna split this thing. Oh, huh. look at that. It was lodged right in the head. Right there. Bingo. We got the slip tip back. Now we're gonna carry that same line. I like that serrated edge. The serrated edge makes it so nice. It's a little bit harder when you're doing this side because you have all this weight that's leaning on that backbone. Um, I don't have a good answer to this, so if one of you are watching and you have a good answer, let me know in the comments below. Some people like to do the trace outline first. Um, so that's one way you could do it. in between those rib bones where you can scrape away, right? Like you can literally take the knife, and scrape away this meat. Tastes great. Little soy sauce, maybe a little wasabi. Excellent stuff. So same thing here. I'm just gonna make sure that this cut is all the way down and severing it. Run it along that backbone. I actually cut away a lot of this tail meat anyways, so got a lot of tendons in it. This last side always gets a little butchered for me. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut away some of these, I have to scrape. Oops, that's garbage. We're gonna scrape away at this and eventually expose the spine. And we're gonna go in and get the 
spinal fluid that's trapped in those synovial cavities. Delicacy, I'll show you how to do that. So with these collars, I'll actually come in, up right there, pull that headline, and then, boom. That right there is bluefin comma. You can actually see there's some Toro right there, really fatty, really meat. Super marbly, super delicious. Very good. Yeah, there is the Hamachi comma, or sorry, the bluefin comma. Okay, so this is the part where we're gonna do a lot of trimming. I like to just take just the choice loins. And I can actually feel it on the other side of the knife. And this is the part where you can trim as much as you want, as little as you want, depending on how picky you wanna get with your meat. And then this top part right here, I will use for poke. So it almost like comes right off. So that right there can all be used as poke or you know you can even do fish dip anything you want there so this is a stone table i don't have an actual cutting board normally i would just cut down through that but for this time i'm not so we're just gonna pick it up here on this scrap the next stage is going to be to stake this i don't like this back section right here this turns into daisy meat. It's kind of fibrous. You can see some of where this bloodline is right here. It almost separates right there. So we'll probably cut that out. So we'll go ahead and just loin this thing out. Peels off the skin so nice. Oh yeah off nice i leave this on for the sake right now you can always take more off but i like leaving some of that extra on the outside because that's going to protect the inside meat and you can see right here where that bloodline is you look right here see that so we actually might be able to That's just bloodline. And now what people like to do for these, they come across and just make them into one inch steaks. So it'll look like that. And that's what you see in the grocery store, right? When you buy your tuna steak for 10 bucks, best way to do it, paper towel, dry. And this fish was stoned which means that it had a piece of its central nervous system uh, impaired to the point where I was able to end the life quickly. Um, usually that means that there's not a lot of lactic acid buildup in the fish. Um, the only downside to that is when you go to bleed it, it's not gonna be bleeding as profusely because it's dead and normally that part's pumping, pumping that blood out. So that's why this bloodline is so thick. We're just gonna cut around it because we don't need it. And again, I'm confident there's some of you out there who are watching this and I'm like, dude, that's such a waste. Guess what? This, if you wanna keep it, you can smoke it, turn it into fish dip. It's super oily, so it's really good for fish dip, but I gotta be honest with you, for me, this is daisy food. So here's the finished product. So beautiful tuna steaks, bluefin tuna steaks. I you see, I'm not even done with this loin right here. I've got three more to go. I'm not gonna bore you guys with all that, but this is what it looks like when it's done. This is what it looks like when it hits the grocery stores. I'll show you a video of what it looks like when it hits your plate at the sushi restaurant. So if you're interested in doing a trip like this, follow along. We have an entire series coming out. We've done one for Costa Rica. We have one coming out for Bahamas. Um, and then we haven't even started on the 
uh, San Diego Bluefin. So we're doing the San Diego Bluefin. It's tough diving. We've had a lot of people come out. One thing I want to make sure you are of is you have to be able to launch a 50, 60 foot dive, hit the bottom, shoot the fish. It's harder than it looks. I know when you see the videos, it looks like they're just everywhere and it's super easy, but it's not. Kelly did a great job shooting her 191 pound bluefin. Biggest fish that I've had on my charters, <laughs> biggest fish that I've been a part of in terms of bluefin, gotten bigger yellow fins, but epic fish, super, super, super awesome. I'm stoked on it. I'm gonna finish doing this. You can watch her video. It's gonna come out, I don't know, yesterday, maybe tomorrow. We'll see what time. I'm sure there are some guys out there with a knife that can do it in one or two cuts. If you can, comment below. I'd like to see your video. In the meantime, this is how you break down a bluefin tuna. Thanks for watching.